This is Big Daddy Carlos coming at you live, and now Triple B presents Entertainment for the Big Kids. Hi, my name is Dan Johnson, and I'm with Three Square Food Bank. We are part of the Feeding America Network, and we are the only food bank in Southern Nevada. Right now, over 447,000 of our neighbors are food insecure. One in three children are living in food insecure homes. Food insecurity is when you just don't know where your next meal is going to come from. Thanks to Big Daddy, Ava, and all the folks that have donated, we were able to provide over 3,000 meals to the folks that need help. I just wanted to say thank you for joining us in the fight against hunger, because together, we can feed everyone. <laughs> hey, this is Alex Grossi from Quiet Riot. Coming at you from Backstage Bar and Billiards in beautiful downtown Las Vegas. And I am here tonight with local legends, Crash Midnight. We're going to be shooting some shit, shooting some pool, and talking about some very cool upcoming events and music in general. So stick around. So this is the first streaming show you guys are going to be doing. Uh, how do you feel about this new platform? You know, I mean, when we uh, went through this pandemic, we had a sold out show right down here ready to go and, and we were so excited it, it was sold out two months in advance everyone was pumped up and we had two other shows that were ready to go after that and, and, and just the world stopped yeah you know it's crazy and it's a whole different platform um, but we're really excited to get into this you know there's nobody doing it the way that uh, Big Daddy Nava are down here they're putting their money where their mouth is and they're really putting something together that I don't think I've seen anywhere else in the country. Right I now. can attest to that because uh, my side project Hooker, Hooker Some Blow did that's uh, right you guys played we, one. we did it back in October and I've A-B'd it with everything else out there, and it, nothing comes close. When I hear you talking, when I'm on the street, your mouth don't move, but I can't speak. Right. And I, I've had people that usually tell me when something they see online is not good. Yeah, yeah. They've actually called me to <laughs> say how good too. this is. <laughs> like, the, man, this is, where'd you, where'd you do that? So, it, yeah, they, they're doing it right. Which is no, very right nice on. TSOL did one, Say Ferris. Right on, yeah. Leave it to these guys to just show everybody else up and, and really make something special. Well, they're, there. they're set up properly for it. I think what, because they were already set up to begin with, they were way ahead of the curve. I think when the pandemic broke, a lot of venues scrambled to get set up for live streaming. Yeah. You can't just set it up overnight and yeah. get a crew overnight. These guys all know what they're doing to the point where it's like, you know, it's it's actually beyond impressive to see it run properly because I've done other, been around other ones that are the polar opposite. The thing is, is like this venue is owned by an artist and he knows what artists want and he yeah. knows what's important to them and he, he knows the production level. Like you're only as good as what you're able to show to that audience and if that yeah. audience is online, that's the only impression they're going to get of you. So I understand you got a lot of new material, including a song called Killing Time. Um, what can you tell me about that? Tell everyone about that, I should say. So, uh, that was a terrible shot, but <laughs> we're, uh, when we had all of our concerts canceled, you know, all we could do was make the best of it. And um, I don't really want to say COVID was a blessing in disguise because it's been really tough for a lot of people. But for us, it did give us a chance to get after a lot of things that had been sort of on the back burner for a while, right? Exactly. So. We got to do a lot of songs that had just been, hey, we'll get to this someday, we'll, we'll start working on this someday after we finish you know, this next concert, this next tour, whatever it is. And this gave us the time to get after that. Yeah. And so now we have a brand new single called Killing Time. We're actually gonna call this, um, this streaming concert event is gonna be called the Crash Midnight Killing Time streaming concert event. I feel like it's a pretty apt uh, yep. <laughs> title for where we all are right now. And uh, we're, we just signed a new deal with Symphonic Distribution, who's been fantastic for us. They're going to bat for us for this first single. And we're shooting to have four new singles out this year and then wrap it all into an album for uh, next year. And we're basically, we're just going to keep firing singles at people until they're sick of us. So that's, that's the game plan. That's great. Surrounded by the ocean, this is our home. Every little bit counts, and uh, we gotta take care of it. Away from home, and I get lonely. I'm missing you only when I'm away, and it's a sunny day. It's not quite the same 
as the ocean do. So now that you've been living in Vegas for a while, um, have you found yourself using this city as any kind of influence for songwriting material? You know, it's actually, we, we've been asked this question a bunch of times and it's, it's so interesting that like, I think our hearts will always come from Boston because that's where we clawed our way up and that's where we got signed and all that stuff. But we have never been embraced by a city the way that Vegas has. And I think that that's definitely translated into our music. I see us, you know, um, some, I don't want to give away a couple of our new singles, but we have a couple new ones that are going to be coming out later this year that are dead on about our experience in Vegas. Uh, yeah. And yeah. about the, you know, it's, it's, it's just a different crowd out here, and it's a crowd that has just embraced us in a way that, um, that I don't think we, we definitely never expected when we moved out here, because we didn't know what to expect when we came out of Vegas. Like, there's a show on every block. You could spit and hit a show yeah. in this town. And thankfully, there's, there's places like you know, right down here at Backstage Bar and Village at Fremont Country Club, who is, is they're, they're completely pushing that scene right now. To their credit, they've, they've streamed more shows than any other major venue in the entire U.S. right now. Yeah, yeah. And, and well. With and good, well, good yeah. You, you and actually, know, that's, a, that's a very important point. It's, because, quanti it's quantity and quality. Yeah, they've hit both quantity and quality. And, and that's something that, you know, I'm so proud to be a part of. I know you are too. Like, it's just... This is something that I think when you walk in here, you get a sense of like, this place means something. Yeah. This place has history. This, this yes. place feels like home, you know? And it's not like it's, it's not, not to talk down on anything on the strip, but like this place is real. Well, know? yeah, it's rock, it's rock and roll. And you get, you get that as an artist, sometimes you would get to a gig and you're like, all right, it, it pays well, whatever, but it's just to say, this is not cool. Yeah. And the artistic side of you with, with integrity you kind of feel a little weird afterwards. You walk in here, it's like, all right, I'm home. That's why we made this our home base, you know, and like, this is where we have our residency. This is pre-COVID. I mean, we were going to be playing, you know, four shows a quarter here. Like, it, it was like, we were doing a lot. And it's, it's just been, you know, life has other plans, I guess. Right. But I mean, it, there, was a, there was a reason that we aligned ourselves with these guys, and it's because they share our same vision. They share a, a lot of bands' visions in, in this scene of, let's make this scene be the same as you know as, as iconic as you know the Sunset Strip was in the yeah. 60s, 70s, and 80s. Like this place, you walk outside and you go to every single bar on this street, and they're all playing rock and roll. Every yep. single bar. Yeah. You know, and now that there's a place like this that's becoming world famous for what they're doing online, like they're they're streaming to everyone in the world yeah. right now. This is becoming a, a place that is going to be a destination, I think, for years and years to come. It's yeah. That's that's. I mean, I can see. You know, this being the, with the exposure with the live stream, it being like the you know the you know the Vada version of the whiskey. It know? really is. It's I mean, the last point right now. Iconic, right? But there, that doesn't mean there can't be another one that comes up. You know. Well, and everybody's booping out here right that's now. That's the other so, thing too. This math. This is, that, that they're shaking that coast and pulling this, it right over this here. This past year has made a lot of people that were hardcore fans of LA and yeah. they were born. You know, they, they're never going to leave. They're they're packing up and leaving. I know. It's because it's gotten so crazy out there. And it's so congested, and it's just 
so divided, yeah. you know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a fun place to be. Come out here, you'll have more fun. There was only one place we could bring that energy and that creative experience to Las Vegas, and that was downtown. Downtown was open and ripe for it and ready because downtown is where it all started. I also heard that you recently regained ownership of your catalog. So speaking wanna, of deeply wanna, personal you, things, you wanna, yeah. Okay, so you, th I, this intrigues me because I know what that means. I know what that could also mean. So what regaining control, first off, how did you lose control of your catalog and what led to regaining it? So, uh, as I'm sure you've probably been through in, in this industry, is when you sign that label deal, mm -hmm. you know, somebody else now owns those masters. They now own those the stuff that you wrote, they own. And that's fair because well, they they're, own the they're recordings gonna, of Yes, yeah. exactly. You know, and, and, and that's fair because they're, they're paying for all that stuff. Yeah, they're paying yeah. for the marketing, they're paying for the recording. Um, but in our case, and again, I don't want to throw our label under the bus because they, they tried very hard. Right. And they were, they were given a, a, a shit start circumstance, you know, that they, they had to try to muddle their way through. But things didn't really work out the way that we had signed up for with them. Right. You know, so it was, our, our first album was a collection of, it was almost like our greatest hits album. When it finally came out, like this was, it was 12 songs that we had written over the course of five years of us being together right. by the time we got and signed. And released it on other releases independently. Shit, we had released our, our, our first single, 151. Um, I think there's five releases of that at this point. Like before, Did you remix it and re re Oh, yeah, 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 at okay, least yeah. 80 times. So there, <laughs> there, there were some of those songs were written when we were like 20 years old, like, right. like literally 2-0 years old. And it was, um, they meant so much to us and to finally be able to have the opportunity to buy back the rights to those recordings and be able to own all those and, and a lot of a lot of people that are not in the music industry don't understand like yeah, yeah, yeah. the implication of what that means so as a quick example we got to be the uh, title track for formula 4 racing one of our our songs one of our very first songs diamond boulevard um, was the title track for that and we got thousands of dollars for that yeah and if we had if we uh, had still had our label owning that song, our label would have gotten thousands of dollars for that. We would have got a tiny fraction of that. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's, that's another a huge thing for us is, is knowing that not only do we have this stuff in perpetuity, do we own it, but this is something that's gonna go on forever. Exactly. You know? and it's something that meant so much to us and it's meant so much to, to the fans that we have. I mean, shit, like uh, on one uh, social media platform alone, we have over a quarter million people that love our stuff yeah. and like this is, that means so much to us. That's yeah. something that we wrote in a tiny, shitty ass little apartment in Boston yeah. meant that much to, to that many people is, it's just, it's, it's a really cool it's feeling. Shit. So I also wanted to mention that you're gonna be part of um, helping to launch our new music platform uh, called VIPs. And it's Vegas Industry Premier Showcase that we're gonna be doing from here, from the Fremont Country Club. Um, it's, it's, it's gonna be a really cool thing. We're really glad to have you guys involved with it, so. And there's gonna be a lot of uh, industry people tuning in and participating in that too, I think? Yeah, I mean, it's basically a New York or LA regular showcase live on steroids. Cause you're That's gonna awesome, be man. playing live to people all over the world and having the industry's top lawyers, managers, agents, A&R guys watching on Zoom and in real time. It's yeah. the this is like now. a one of a kind thing that they're it's, doing it's here. The, it's the first. It's the first show of its kind. There's nothing. There's never been anything like this before for um, for bands. I mean, it was always get the van, go to New York and play. Yep. And now because pray of to God COVID, somebody so shows up there and sees you. Yeah, you pray they show up, and, and if they do, they're sober enough to remember your set. Exactly. Or pay attention to it. This is undivided attention. You get to he you know you hear everything properly, and it's. I mean. The amount of the guys you're going to be playing in front of industry-wise, you'll probably never see in the same room in, in LA or New York or wherever. So it's it's really like the ultimate way to get things out there. And there's also going to be a record company launched in, in conjunction with it called Magnificent Bastard Records. I think this like really speaks to to what uh, Big Daddy Carlos and Ava are doing here, where where they've they've gone all in to try to really make 
um, uh, just just make a huge scar on the landscape of, of the music industry. Yeah, you know where it's where it's something that they're they want to be the drivers of the the new bands that get discovered, the new bands that that, that break out of Vegas. And what better place to, to break out well, the, of than well, the entertainment well, capital of the world, right? We're gonna we're gonna have the plan is to have it, uh, each episode will have a Vegas band, an LA band, or from wherever, yeah. and then an acoustic act. Every genre, it's all all over the map. And it's, yeah, it, it, it's giving bands a platform because, I mean, right now, you can't even play the whiskey or showcase or wherever. There's nowhere to play, you know, and this kind of brings everyone together. You know, coming up when I did, if there was something like this, like, you mean to tell me I want to play in front of this guy, this agent, this lawyer, this manager, and this co record company all in one night at once, and they're all going to be paying attention? Yeah. That, that was li literally impossible. Even two years ago, it was impossible. Now, because of COVID and things closing down, like I said, necessity is the mother of invention. And look where we are. So on that note, you guys, I believe, are about to hit the stage. So We're getting have, ready. Have a great show tonight. Looking really looking forward to it. And um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be very impressed. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thank you. <laughs>
dedicate this song to a few particular fuckers tonight. This is called Don't Need Your Advice. Crash Midnight, and I'll tell you what, we're gonna do a little song about one of our favorite places in this city. This is a little song called Chinatown.
All right, so we're going to be doing a lot of new stuff here for you tonight. Some stuff that we're playing for the first time ever. You guys like that idea? We wrote this one uh, last summer. And you know what, before I get into that, I want to I make sure that we um, give everybody a heads up that we've got a link right below this video. And it's to our charity that we're donating the proceeds to tonight. It's called Three Square and it's helping a lot of people get meals. It's the biggest food bank here in Nevada. So if you guys like this show, you like what we're doing, and you want us to uh, keep doing this stuff, you donate to those guys. And we'll leave that link up, whether you see this live, you see this 10 years from now, we're gonna keep that link up so you can help feeding those families. And fuck, while you're out there, buy some of our fucking merch, that link will be down there too. All right, so this is a song. This is a song about letting go. Something meant a whole lot to you. This is called You're Gone.
Hey, this is Alex Grossi from Quiet Riot. And coming at you from Backstage Bar and Billiards in beautiful downtown Las Vegas. And I'm here tonight with local legends, Crash Midnight. We're gonna be shooting some shit, shooting some pool, talking about some very cool upcoming events and music in general. So we're trying a whole bunch of firsts here for you tonight. This is a song that just came out. If you guys got Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, whatever, you guys get on there and find it for us. I want to hear this song all over Las Vegas. This is a song about wasting a fucking shitload of time. It's something called Killing Time. Spotify, Apple, every, every fucking place you listen to music, that's there. And I want to ask you guys again, 
to make sure that you're going down below this video, I'm clicking that link and donating to Three Square, all right? We're here tonight for them, so let's make it worthwhile. Now, uh, while, we're, while we're talking about a lot of things with this band here, I guess, we got a, an old song that I want to play for you. It's the last song we wrote before we moved to Las Vegas from Boston. This one's about the infamous combat zone in Boston where a lot of crazy shit went down. This is a song called Roxy. one down a little bit and before we do I want to give a shout out to our co-producer Tristan Harden doing a great job helping us record all these songs we're gonna have a whole lot of new stuff out for you guys this year we're hoping to get four new songs out make sure you check out that killing time song just came out and here's a brand new one that I think uh, I don't know hopefully we'll fucking record sometime later this year it's called strung out on sunset
My name is Dan Johnson and I'm with Three Square Food Bank. We are part of the Feeding America Network and we are the only food bank in Southern Nevada. Right now, over 447,000 of our neighbors are food insecure. One in three children are living in food insecure homes. Food insecurity is when you just don't know where your next meal is going to come from. Thanks to Big Daddy, Ava, and all the folks that have donated, we were able to provide over 3,000 meals to the folks that need help. I just wanted to say thank you for joining us in the fight against hunger, because together, we can feed everyone. This is Big Daddy Carlos, coming at you live, and now Triple B presents Rock and Roll for the Big Kids. All right, so we got a couple more for you guys. Before we get into that, I want to thank Carlos and Ava, everybody down here, staff at the Fremont Country Club, for helping put all this together, making us look good on stage here. So uh, since we're doing a night of a shit ton of firsts, we're gonna do another, uh, another new song that we're hoping comes out and I don't know, hopefully fucking this year too. We're gonna record a lot of stuff and we'll see what it gets to you guys. You guys ready for this? Uh, this is a song called Black Hat. <laughs>
right, we're gonna let these guys tune back down here. I'm gonna do one more for you. We figured, uh, since this is the first show we've done since a uh, big ass break we took, we might close this show the way that we used to close all our shows way back in Boston. So this one, God, this is like the second song we ever wrote as a band. This is all about taking a ride <laughs> to various locations. This is called Diamond Boulevard. Fucking parts is right down below. Go die!